Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Estancia Lapacho, our South American map, and we start playing full realism as of this week. I know that some of you did enjoy seeing my sort of behind the scenes setup last week, and some of you found it quite painful because you do like realism. So from today, we will play this map as realistically as I possibly can. So we're just going to head downstairs, which is taking in the sights of our estate up there. And I know it's 10 o'clock in the morning, so really we should have um, gotten started by now. We just stopped for a, a quick coffee. And so we, we've had our coffee and we're going to head out and get started. So our very first task today is that we are going to be doing sugarcane harvesting. We've got two sugarcane harvesters here on this farm. You may notice that we have 1.25 million dollars. That does seem like an awful lot. Now if you remember when we moved from Gorala we were moving here to um, to try to help people out. Um, it was kind of like a, a training thing and uh, along those lines we've had some um, sponsorship from some very large agricultural companies including Stara and Case over there so we've got those two machines over there we've got some new land here on this farm we sort of combined some of our farm with the farm in Gerala uh, during harvest specialized sugarcane tippers are commonly used as they have higher tip height allowing them to tip sugarcane stalks directly into a truck to guarantee a quick transport Sugarcane cannot be stored in, sti in silos, however it can be tipped anywhere on the ground and stored there. Different stations offer different prices for sugarcane, but the most profitable station would be the sugarcane mill. Right, so we can store our sugarcane in here under cover just for a little while if we want to. Well, we can stockpile it on the ground outside. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run one of these with standard hired help, and we're going to run one of these with... Um, um, actually thinking that we'll probably try and do it with the hired help but we'll use the AI vehicle extension to see if that one can do it. I'm going to divide this field in half and one half will run with the AI vehicle extension into this trailer and we will see if it can cope with it. So my question for this week, you see that we've got all of this money, my question for this week, I have got this land here, this is what we've got for our farm, we've got all of this here. And if you take a look at the growth, we've got two, we've got four fields ready to harvest. That one is wheat, that one is wheat, that one is barley. If I got it right, yes, I have got it right. So we've got um, uh, field one and three are in wheat and they're ready to harvest. Field four is in barley, that's ready to harvest. Field eight is corn and that is ready to harvest. So we've got several fields here ready to plant. And then we've got these two fields over here. We've got field 13 and 15. Their total price to buy is just under a million dollars or field 29 that total price there that one is also just under a million dollars so which field would you like me to buy i'm going to buy one more well which collection of fields would you like me to get just field 29 over here the big one the odd shaped one or do you want me to get these two here is your vote is your game head in the comment section down below let us know which one you want and why and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner which field do we go for field 29 or do we go for field 13 and 15 this is to round out our farm and sort of complete the land that we're going to be using we might much later on buy some more again but at the moment this is kind of going to be it so do, do we go for this section here or do we sort of stick with this like lot up here we do have field 14 down there as well so there is my weekly question. Now, our two harvesters, we're going to get those started in just a moment. Um, I just want to show you the combine that we have for the farm, which is this one here. Now, the header is quite big for this combine, but I don't think it's completely out of place. The header is sort of fairly expensive. We got the Turbo 8820 John Deere. It's an old, faded machine. It does look very cool. Let me just show you this combine. This is our second combine that we've got for the farm. Um, our first one being the bison that is sat over there and we're going to use these two combines to harvest what we've got here at the moment and then after we've done this we can look at buying another combine later and I have one lined up that I think that you will quite like I'm just going to show you that one very quickly and the combine that we will be buying later on is this one right here this is the T670 now we can upgrade this to um, the 670i motor chip tuning that puts it up to a 510 horsepower combine it does look very cool so that is a very very nice combine however the headers that come with the combine are actually the same size as the one that we've got on this old combine you've got um that is the one that we've got right now on the old combine 
Um, so it's kind of a new header on an older combine. And then this one here, it does actually look a bit shinier, um, but it's exactly the same size. And I don't think that is going to hold it back. I don't think that is going to be any interference. It's slightly faster on the ground if you compare the two speeds of them. So it is slightly faster. And obviously the new John Deere combine has got a bigger header. This one here is for doing oilseed rape. It puts an extension on the front of this header right here. So those two sort of go with it. And then you've got this one as here as well that goes with it. Um, so we've got the, the headers, and yes, they are the same size, but I mean, maybe we could always upgrade later to find a bigger header to go with this combine. So we've got that one there. I've also got another John Deere tractor that we're going to be using later on in series, which is the JD8020 series. Um, and I have seen some other YouTubers using this one, and when I was searching around for John Deere tractors, this one came up quite frequently, so I thought that I would go for it. I'm not actually sure if it's a real tractor or not. I genuinely don't know that. Um, but it does look pretty good. So that is another one. Now, the links for this one and for the combine, um, all three combines actually, or they should be, are in the description down below. Um, however, the John Deere combine, um, the, the, the new one that we haven't bought yet, and the John Deere 8010 tractor, I think the original download links for those are from Mod Hoster. That's fine. I have included them however they do not have a direct download from mod hoster and i hate having to leave that kind of link i tried to download it from mod hoster using the link that they had provided which was sending sending you off to uploaded.net or whatever it's called uploaded.com something like that and it's absolutely atrocious. It was, um, I, it tried to download something very dodgy onto my computer. It's also trying to push something through on the browser. I absolutely hate it. And the estimated download um, time for the mod was about 40 minutes. Now, I've got no problems with supporting modders and keeping original download links and so on to a point okay and this is basically this i think this has gone a step too far i'm not willing to wait for 40 minutes to download a mod after having had to fight through all of that nonsense and rubbish in order to be able to get to the thing in the first place so i have gone to fs17.co now i know there are quite a few people that don't like that website because if you're going to find any mod that has been pinched from any other upload point it's going to be on there. That mod, that site is notorious for it. However, that site also includes a direct download. They host it themselves to every single mod that they host there. And for that reason, that's why I've gone to that site, because it's the only one I can find that includes a direct download for these mod packs. You don't have to wait 40 minutes, and there's no danger of installing a whole load of crapware on your computer. And yes, I did say the word crapware, because it is just that. Um, I apologize if you find that offensive. So there, I've, that's what I've done. I've, um, I really don't like going to other sites and not, and going, you know, outside of the original mod creators websites. I don't actually want this one here to go up through the middle. I actually think I want this one here to sort of, we'll wait, we'll leave this one just a moment. We'll move this one over a little bit further. I don't want to go too far over. Um, We'll move this one over here a little bit further, and then we can use the one with the trailer just for the first pass up across. So if we leave that one there a second, and we go back and get this one over here. Um, so yes, I've included the links from fs17.co. If you really don't like the idea of using that website, you are more than welcome to go to the mod hoster one, which is also included, and wait for your 40 minutes. Um, I'm not willing to do that. Um, I do, you know... I will support the modders as much as I possibly can, but there is a line, and I think that those mod packs there have actually crossed that line. I don't think that's acceptable, especially limited, forcing people to go to a website that is going to install something dodgy onto their computer. I'm not going to ask you to do that, so if that is the only option that a mod creator is giving people to download a mod, I will go and I will find the fs17.co one. I think that's fair. I don't think that I'm being unreasonable with this. Um, I think I'm, I'm being as fair as I possibly can and supporting the modders as much as I possibly can. But at the same time, you know, you, you do have to support the people that, you know, watch your channels and use the mods and play the game. So I know this kind of is going to be a touchy and controversial thing, um, but I'm, I'm hoping that this is going to be okay. Anyway. 
we're going to get started on our sugarcane harvest today. And what I would like to do is I'm going to cut a uh, line up across the field here. And we'll probably do two passes straight up and down with this one here. Once we've done this, then one side of the field I'm hoping will work with the AI vehicle extension. I don't know. I haven't actually tried it, to be honest. So let's just see if it does. Yes, AI vehicle extension is running. So it will. It does look like it will do it. Um, I'm not actually going to run it for this one, so we will try that in a minute. Um, but first of all, we're just going to use a normal hired help. One point I will say is that I haven't actually enabled... Right, why aren't you running? Why have you stopped? Oh, it's because of the angle of the trailer, I think. Um, yes. It's definitely the angle of the trailer. It's not quite over the... Um, and you can't actually move the spout. You, there's no way to actually physically move the spout yourself, which does make it a little bit more difficult. So what we'll do is we will manually do this. If I start that one up, you should do it a little bit, and we'll just manually push it through. And hopefully it will start going into the... Uh, now, it's, now it's going into the trailer, so now it's working all right. Yeah, I haven't got the... I'm going to go in cab for this just so we can see what it's like. I don't actually have the crop destruction mod on at the moment for obvious reasons. I didn't want to destroy half of this field while we were trying to harvest it. I felt that it would be better if we did it without the, um, the crop destruction mod. But I can always put that on for next week because I suspect it's going to take most of this week to harvest all of the sugarcane here. So we will do this, we will harvest the sugarcane and then after we've done this we can always go and put the crop destruction mod on. One other thing I'd like to say is it has been suggested to me that a we should be concentrating while we're here in South America our main crops other than the sugarcane which we're not, I'm not going to plant very much more of this, I'm going to plant, actually I might replant this one field and just keep it here in this single field. Um, because this one, we didn't plough it before we um, got the, the field ready. So it's it's going to need uh, redoing. It's going to need ploughing. Okay, this looks very weird sort of going along. You can't see anything at all, can you? Let me come out of cab a minute. Right, now you'll see the problem that we have when trying to turn with this one. It'll swing round like that. And it seems to do it okay using this type of trailer. However, it gets to that point and it doesn't like it. So let me just turn this off. And we're going to swing out and round so that it will hopefully be able to come back in. So, yeah, uh, quite a few people, um, well, I say quite a few, a, a few people have pointed out that it would actually be a lot more realistic playing this game if we were to grow primarily um, uh, beans and corn, it was. Beans and corn. Those are the prime exports for um, South America. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do um, mostly beans and corn. And we will grow some other crops as well. I don't know if they grow sunflowers in South America. No idea. We do have a field available for sunflowers. Uh, if you look over here, that field down there is actually sunflowers. And yes, yeah, so we got that one there. That one was sunflowers, but it's not currently ready. So we've got corn here. That one there is be uh, No, that's canola. It was beans up there. So soybeans and corn are the main crop that we would be growing in South America. And that's really good. So that's what we will focus on most of our crop. I'm going to try to do a minimum of 50% of all of our arable land done as either sugar, uh, either um, corn or uh, soybeans. We'll, we'll, um, we'll do a mixture of the two. But a minimum of 50% will be corn or soybeans. And then the rest of the land, you know, maybe we'll do a little bit extra on some of the seasons. But um, we'll also include some of the other crops as well. So we do have some variation going. Right, just going to press H again on here. And I'm going to spin this one round, if I can, and do another pass up across the field. And I think one more pass will be enough that we then have enough room to be able to get started with the second sugarcane harvester, I'm hoping. Um, we will also need to empty out this trailer, so we'll be using one of the star attractors, I think, to pull that one. So we'll just bring that one down there like that, and if I can bring that round, it's going to have to go like that, I think. Is that going to be... No, I'm going to actually need to move over a bit further. It's quite hard 
to get this one to line up. And yes, I wouldn't be yanking it round like that. I don't think it's actually very realistic to tow your own trailer with one of these. Although I don't know, I've never actually seen um, sugarcane being harvested. People who have, people who live in South America and who have harvested sugarcane, um, have actually told me that it's it is fairly realistic the way that it takes so long to do the field because apparently in real life sugarcane is painfully slow to do it really is really really slow to um process and harvest it does take this long so i quite like the fact that they've done it quite realistic like this um it's going to be it's, it's quite pleasing to me that we've got this um good realism going with how the crop is done so we can continue this on we we will it, obviously this is going to take us a little while to do this week but i think this is a wide enough path up through here so as soon as we get up to the top i can um hopefully get it going with the ai vehicle extension we'll see how that one works and i'm gonna need to assign a tractor to this i think that the small massey ferguson that came with the platinum dlc is going to be a little it's not going to be powerful enough to pull this trailer um that's a 21,000 litre trailer and it's completely full so that is a, that's a huge amount of um sugar cane a, that's a large amount of weight in there i mean the weight that is going to be in that trailer in order to be able to make it do that is going to be quite quite a lot actually i'm, I'm not quite sure what it would be it's certainly not it's not going to be 21 tons but I would say that we're probably looking at a 10 ton trailer here. Um, you know, with the sugar, because sugar cane's quite wet. It is, um, it's, it's got a lot of moisture in it. Um, so yeah, I reckon 21 tons, may, maybe, maybe, I'd, I'd, not 21 tons, 10 tons, maybe. Um, but I still think that is too much for our little tiny Matty Ferguson to be able to cope with. So we're not going to expect it to do that. So I'm going to do that, and this should be the right way round. Hopefully now if I bring that one up in it will work. Let's see AI vehicle extension is going to come up in and it already measured the field when we were on it last time Okay, so it is working on this side. So that's what it does. It um, it blows the um, All the bits that it's cut it chucks it down onto the side out of the way and We're filling our trailer as soon as this trailer is filled We'll then stop and we'll back off a little bit so that we can get the tractor and we can do the tip. There we go. So if I just press H a minute and I'm going to back up. And now you can see why I didn't want the uh, crop destruction mod running at the moment. Because the trailer is actually going on to the sugarcane. I think even the sugarcane harvester itself is going on to the sugarcane. So I don't know how well that would have worked. Um, and for that reason, I've... Oops. I do have the manual attaching mod on. I completely forgot about that. So we'll just unhitch that one there, jump back in, and if I just jump forward a little bit like this, there. Right, I'm not going to, actually we can, we, we, we will for this one, but I probably won't run to the tractors every time. We probably do, like we did in Garala, we will sort of do a combination of walking to the machines when they're close by, and then just flicking to them, so it's kind of running a farm, um, so it's, it's like farm management and simulation sort of rolled into one if, um I, I felt that we did achieve a reasonable balance doing that last time round so that's what we're going to try and do this time now that one there has got these great big wide tires on they're absolutely huge they really are um and we will be using that for doing a lot of groundwork stuff later i don't know if i took the wide tires on this one as well i did i did actually okay we'll take the one with the wide tires then because that's the one that we've got and we're going to concentrate on using the stars to start with We'll come to John Deere's later on, and we'll be buying the bigger John Deere's later on as well. Um, and like you said, um, you wanted John Deere's on this map, so John Deere is going to be our primary machine for working here after we've spent a bit of time playing with the new DLC stuff. So I'm going to try my absolute best to do John Deere for most of this stuff. Now, you're probably noticing that we've got 1.2 million, and... You know, these fields are going to be just under a million to buy, whichever one we do, whichever one you vote for. So that's going to leave us with well over a quarter of a million left. We'll probably actually be closer to 300,000. We don't have a loan. I have already paid off the loan. I did that quite deliberately because I didn't think that it would be um, very sensible to have a loan of um, like 75,000 when, you know, we, we were a well established farm and we, we don't have um, those kind of issues at the moment. We can always take out a loan later if we want to. Um, 
But no, what I was... Um, one of the things that I'm going to need to do is we don't actually have at the moment the equipment for running the cows. We've got the cows and if you'll see here I do actually the cows are all nicely topped up they've got everything they need they've got most or almost full on silage and hay and we've got the power food grass straw their cleanliness is currently quite low um, I do need to get them cleaned up and we're going to have to decide how we're going to do that. I think we'll probably use the Laylee Juno cleaning robot on these this time round because we didn't in Gorala. Um, and I really, really like that mod. So I'll probably get one of those installed fairly soon. Um, with the cows, we don't have anything for cutting grass. We don't have anything for gathering grass. We don't have a baler and we don't have um, any turners or anything like that. Um, we also, I don't think, have a mixed feeder. So the, as for the mixed feeder, I was thinking that we would most likely go for this placeable. So I'm just going to show you that one. It's the same one that we had in Gorala. And I particularly like this placeable. It's really, really good. We have here a forage tank. You can actually put this one down and you can buy mixed feed straight from here for your animals. And I like that idea, but I don't think that that would be entirely realistic. I mean, we kind of like buying it in from other sources and I think we you know I think that you could do that but I don't really want to do it for this um this series um the beekeeping mod I'll come to that in a bit so it's this one here and it is a hundred and ten thousand dollars to install this thing um but I really do think that we should seriously consider using this one it was really really good in um Gorala and it also because it's quite quick to get it loaded up and then feed the cows out of it. We've got 160 cows here. That's a lot of, that is a lot of animals. Um, this one really does speed up the whole feeding process. We're not going to have to spend anywhere near as much time um, feeding all of the animals. Now, this over here is the slow bee pack. Now, we looked at that towards the end of... Um, we, we had all of this. We had the slow bee here, plus we also had the sage work here, the, the, um, the sawmill running as well. Um, we used that towards the end of the Goldcrest series. And what I want to know is, do you want me to get that installed fairly early on on this map? We can, we've can. we got loads of trees all over this map, so we can start using that. Do you want me to do some beekeeping? Would you like to see beekeeping? I'm currently trying to decide how to use the space out here. I'm just wondering if I should put the sugar cane under cover in here, or if we should... I think we'll put it outside, because we're going to sell it fairly... We are going to sell it fairly quickly. But we, we're not going to sell it just yet. Um, so we're going to store it outside. I'm currently looking to see what we're going to do with this area here. Now a lot of people have suggested that I should cultivate it over. Rather than using the ground modification mod. Which several people don't really like because it is known to be a little bit buggy. So rather than using that one, plough it all up, cultivate it. Have a cultivated surface on here because that's kind of like a packed dirt surface. It looks kind of similar to a packed dirt surface have that all over this area here and then we can install various different sheds over this whole area and I think that would actually work really well I quite like that idea so that is something that I'm seriously considering doing so if we just for now we're going to tip this sugar cane out here we're just going to put a pile of it just out here and everything that comes from this trailer we'll bring this down here each time and we'll load it up here and then the other trailer once we get the other um, sugarcane harvester going that one we're going to load it into the lorry and we're going to sell that one direct at the moment we've also got quite a few crops um, you know different crops we've got we've got 94,000 liters of corn here because we've we've done quite a lot of corn work in the past so we've got a lot of corn um, but we've also got quite a lot of beans as well those are our primary ones and then we've got smaller quantities of the other ones so we will want to save some of this for our pigs when we activate our pigs later on we, we're not getting started on pigs just yet but we will move to them later um, and then at the moment we've got sugarcane here now the best price at the moment is at the bakery we get 243 dollars per thousand liters right down at the bakery but um i mean the sugar mill is not great the harbor is quite poor and then we've got the transport company so we'll look at that and we'll probably um i'm actually thinking we might go for the transport company we could take it in the lorry uh, the truck rather over there and tip it in the train station and then from there we can go and we have to go up round here from that point, um, we can then take the train up after the harvest is all finished and we can sell all of that lot all in one go and then the other half of the field 
will be stored in a great big heap down there and we can load that one up at a later date. Um, suggestions today, please, on what loader vehicle we're going to have. And I don't currently, I do have a tractor and front loader. I do not want to stay as a tractor and front loader. I would like something different. I'm either thinking that we will go for, let me just show you very briefly, uh, telehandlers. I'm thinking that we will either go for this Merlot right here. I quite like the idea of using that one. I don't think I've used it yet. Um, that's a really nice one. That is from um, the same people that did the small baler. And arm, the arm team, that is the, the ARM team, the arm team. Um, they did that one there. It's a really nice little um, little vehicle. It's, it's not a huge, it's not huge, but it's, I quite like it. It's, it's got some good reach and everything on it. So it'll either be that one, or it would be the Manitou, that one right there. Or we will go for a wheel loader, and we will go up to the JCB. We'll go for this huge, great big JCB. I really, really like the JCB. It's far superior to the Leaper. This one here just doesn't have the power to do anything at all. It won't go. It just it gets stuck on hills. You literally, you put it on a hill and it just won't drive up it under its own accord. It's, I really don't like that one. So if we're going to go for a wheel loader, we go for the JCB. This one could also, it's got a much higher reach on it. Um, all round, this is one of my favorite machines um, for any kind of loader work. I really have gotten on very well with this one. It's like a farm master, and that is so much better. You know, I've said before that I don't like these types of telehandlers here. It's because they got the boom in the middle. The the wheel loader is altogether different. This is a I've driven one of those in real life. It's absolutely fantastic to drive. So yeah, do you think I should go for the JCB four uh, four thirty five? Or do you think I should go for one of the telehandlers, either the Merlot or the Manitou? So get into the comment section today and um, talk about that one as well. There's a lot of things for you to talk about in the comment section today, but I want to make sure that we, we're going to sort of start off fairly well on this series. And the idea is that we are moving to, we're an established farm. So we need to make sure that we got everything going as we would for an established farm. I'm just going to back this one up here out the way a little bit. And... Stop him right there a second. Um, yeah, so we, we, we're we sort of going to keep everything running as though we're on an established farm rather than starting from scratch again. Now, I know that there are a few people that didn't like the idea of me starting from scratch, um, uh, didn't like the, the idea of me using this established farm idea, but we started from scratch a few times and we haven't really done this move straight into a properly established farm. And so it's something a little bit different. After the series, we will then see if we keep doing this or if we do it another way. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet. So now the big question is, the v the AI vehicle extension, will it get down to the end of the field and turn the corner properly? I really, really hope it does because um, so long as the spout for the sugar cane will get round okay, it should be fine. We shouldn't have any issues with this, um, which means that we can leave this side to carry on and then we can go and get our John Deere tractor that we've got down the bottom with um, those two trailers. We can bring the truck up here. We can get that one ready to start um, offloading into and we can run both of them at the same time, which will hopefully finish this field a lot faster than just doing it on its own. But you're getting an idea, I think, of the amount of time that this harvest is going to take us. Um, it's definitely not very quick and that one's he's literally just spinning around on the spot okay um, it's quite a rough approach to things and it's decided to just give up altogether for a moment not quite sure why it's given up altogether let me just go on here and we should, I'll tell you what we do need to go, so we'll go into settings and we'll do that up to 100% like that. Um, position checks, okay. So if we just go okay on that one and we come out of there. It stayed over the trailer. It did do that. Um, but no, what it did, because of the way that it's tried to turn this corner here, it hasn't picked up this little bit here. And I think that's the bit that's actually confused it. So if I start it up a moment and we just harvest that there. And then I come round here. And I'm just going to bring it along myself like that. I think that's about right. And then press H. It should be able to carry on. So it's it's kind of doing it. It's not great, but it is kind of doing it. And I think you're probably understanding now why I chose to have the crop destruction turned off just for this. Um, and then once we've done the sugar cane, we can always switch it back on again and uh, go back to normal like that. Um, you can let me know about that one in the comment section. What do you think? 
Um, is it going to turn this corner? Now that I've increased the turn width to 100%, is it going to do it? It skipped. I don't like the way that it skipped that little bit, and I don't think it likes it either. I think that's the bit that kind of threw it, because it's going to back up now, and then I bet it stops again. It's going to get to... Yes. Right, so that seems to be the bulk of the problem, is it doesn't like what it's done there. If I stop it and then start it up again... Nope, it doesn't like that at all. Oh, I know why. It's because of the angle of the trailer. Let me go on a little bit further. It might just be the angle of the trailer full stop. That might be what's causing the problem. But there isn't any way, I don't think, unless I try and do the vehicle extension with a normal drawbar trailer. That might be the other option here, because it, we're not. this isn't going to turn the corner properly. So maybe we need to think about getting a different trailer. Let's just take a look and see what we've got in the way of trailers that might work with this. We've got tippers over here. Um, so at the moment, we're using this one. Now, if we go for that one, what's it going to be like when it turns the corner? I got a feeling it's not it's not going to do very well with it. Um, these are too high. These are too big. They're not going to work. Um, and maybe we could go for one of them. And that's like 80, 32,000. That, I'll tell you what, this one here, this Brymont here, I'd, I'd, Brymont, I've never heard of Brymont. Um, that might actually be the answer. We could try that one there. It's got it's got a long wheelbase thing on it. Um, you know, the wheel's right at the back there, so... I don't know what that's going to be like turning the corner. Hmm. That's a tricky... It, it's a genuine... It's, it really is quite a tricky one. We'll, we'll try a longer trailer. I think this one here is the one to try. So if we go... Uh, wheel setup, default, chevron pattern, wide tyres. Let's try this and see what that is. Um, I'll buy that one. $57,000 for that trailer. That is a very expensive trailer. How much is the other ones? These back here. Oh, they're $27,000. Um, what was the capacity? I, I, I should have looked at that. Oh, thirty two. It's quite a bit bigger. It is a bigger trailer. And it's actually done this corner okay. It's managed to get round that corner okay. And we may have bought this other trailer a little bit prematurely. Hmm. I tell you what, we're going we're going to go and pick up that trailer. Now, as far as I know, the lorry that we've got, the truck, I should say, um, we're in South America. I should be saying truck now, as far as I know. So let me go through. I think this one does have a rear hitch on it. Uh, yes, it does. So I can bring it back. I can bring the trailer back with this one. So let's start up, and we'll just unhitch this trailer. This trailer is the standard... I, I'm getting asked this quite a bit, so I'll just go through. I'll probably tell you this at least once a week from here on in. Um, this trailer is actually the standard Transport Runner UAL. It's in the beta section on Mod Hub. It's there, available to use. Um, but this one has just been reskinned. Um, it's part of... It's been reskinned as part of the toll package which comes with the Broadacre um, map, the 16 times Broadacres map, which I'm running my Unrealistic series on. It's on. It's part of that package, and they've just recolored it for that. They haven't done anything else to it. They've just recolored it. That's it. Just a recolor. Um, so that's why I've got the one at a slightly different color. If you want that one, there's um, you have to go and look on the Australia map for the the recolored version. And also the bales that we can open, we can open bales manually by hand. Is this one here? The go the Goyle LT mount. I think it's Goyle um, LT Master. That is the you know can, we can bale up a whole load of different items with that one. It's because of that one that I'm able to um, manually open bales. I can open bales by hand. I go up to the bale and it gives me an option to manually spread it by hand. That is the mod that gives you that uh, functionality. That is also, I believe, in a beta section. If it's not in a beta section, um, I'm pretty sure it's in the FS17 mods section. But I think I think they've updated it since then. Um, the contest section. Um, if you don't know where a mod is from in-game, there isn't a search function in-game. But what you can do is you can go to their website. And the website now has a search function. So you can go and you can search it on the website. And then you can see what section it's in and roughly where. And then you can go back in-game and you can you sort of know roughly where to look for it. It does make life a lot easier. They are looking at adding that search function into the game. Um, but I don't. it's not there at the moment. Right, let's just back up here and go to about there. So we can get this one hitched on, and we'll try and bring this one up. This we, It does look like we may have been a little bit premature getting this one. 
Um, but I still think that this might be a good idea. This might be a good one to add to the fleet. So we'll get this one back. I don't think we're going to regret using this one because we don't have another grain trailer at the moment. So if we've got this one as our grain trailer, this is a 32,000 litre capacity, it's going to be pretty good. So we're not just stuck with the, the smaller green one. That we, the, it's Agritech? I think it's Agritech. Um, yeah, we won't just be using that one. Hired blocked. I'm wondering why it's blocked up there. We race back up to the sugarcane field a minute and we can see just what is blocked. Get in here. And I'm going to leave this one down here. I'm not going to use the lorry to the truck. Sorry, the truck. I'm, I'm going to be calling it lorry throughout. You, you know what I'm going to be doing this um, because this is what we call them here in the UK. We always call them a lorry. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's just a, a matter of habit, really. It's, it's, not, um, it's not that I'm doing it deliberately. It's just force of habit over many, many, many years' experience. <laughs> that is a lot of mess. Um, give me your thoughts on how we should keep the animals clean. I'm seriously considering using the Animal Table Manners mod, which basically just removes the whole um, animal spilling food functionality completely from the game, and it just keeps them neat and tidy. So we could either add that, or we could get a Lely Juno and stick that one in here instead. Um, which do you think would be better? Give me some thoughts on that one in the comment section today. Lady Juno or Animal Table Animal Table Manners mod? One or the other. Um, right, we're going to flick through the machinery for this one. Just because it's going to be quicker. It says that. Yeah, see, this time here, it's got itself completely tangled up in the wrong place. So it's not liking it at all. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's just take the hired help off a minute. And... It's also gone too far as well. It's gone. It's skipped the bit that I wanted it to turn down. It's gone right over to the far end of the field. So I actually wanted it to stop and head up that way. And it's not done it. So it might be that the gap that we've got here is not quite big enough for it yet. Bring this one up here. And... I have found that the hired help does take more of a bite than I do, so I think I'm misjudging it at the moment. It's very, very easy to misjudge this one. So let's start that one there, and hopefully that will be in the right place. There we go. It's going to run down through there. Only a little bit more to fill it up right now. It's filled it up completely. If I can back this one all the way up here. Yeah, let's try it like that. Come out. We have run out of time for today, so we're just going to empty this one out and we're going to start the next trailer on here so that we can test it. We bring that in here. It's very difficult to keep this thing straight. Stop there a second. Um, my weekly question for this week is which field would you like me to buy to complete our farm here? Would you like me to get field 29, which is just under a million dollars to buy that one field? Or do you want me to buy fields 13 and 15, which is around about the same price? So do you want me to get those two down there, 13 and 15? Or do you want me to get field 29 over here? It's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. And we'll just come up here. So what we're going to do just before we go is we will empty out this trailer here and we will get the other trailer. We'll run that one up here and we'll do one quick test down across and see if the case um, sugarcane harvester, the case IHA8800 something, um, is capable of turning the corner with that other trailer instead of this one. There's one of them has got to be better than the other, surely. There's, there's got to be an advantage to one of these trailers so we'll see how it copes with it um i don't really care which trailer it uses so long as it can turn the corner that's the, that's going to be that's going to be like the crucial bit is we need it to be able to turn that corner quite easily and i reckon if we bring this one up here we should be able to tip onto the side the advantage of this trailer is that we can tip to the side uh if we select the right side so we want the rain door tip side left that's the one that we want and force tip right down here there we go now the only problem with force tipping on the side is that it puts a little bit of a hump underneath the trailer and that can be a bit of a problem but it's, it's done all right so let's just come down off of the hump and we'll come on around here so we're going to get quite a pile of sugarcane there and then whichever loader we end up getting that's the one that we will use 
ultimately to load up our lorry and sell all the sugarcane. But I'm not sure. We might just keep that there for a little while. That's the one thing that we wouldn't... Uh, realistically, I believe sugarcane has to be sort of taken to a process point fairly quickly. Um, I don't actually know because I've never actually um, done it myself and I haven't actually seen sugarcane harvesting um, in person for... It must be... What are we are now? What are we? Um, at least 25 years. It's been at least 25 years since I've seen any kind of sugarcane harvesting in person. So... It's, it's a fair while and I didn't actually see what they were doing with it but as far as I know it's got to be taken straight to a process plant it cannot be stored for any length of time so if we're to do this realistically we shouldn't be storing it anywhere we should be putting it straight to a process plant so let me know your thoughts on that I'm thinking that we probably do that quite quickly we get it all loaded into lorries and into trucks into trucks and get it sold pretty quick I think that would be the best way to do it so we'll bring this one up around here. One final test before we go is we'll just run this one down through. Hopefully this trailer can actually go on to this um, harvester. That's going to be the next thing because sometimes the trailers don't go on. Um, I know that the sugarcane harvest, the sugarcane trailers themselves, you can't actually put those onto the back of these. Um, uh, the you can't actually put them onto the back of the sugarcane harvesters. It just doesn't work. We'll bring that one back up there and you can stop there let's leap out please work i really hope this works i'm going to be very disappointed if we've just spent 50 grand on a trailer and it won't even work that's that is go there's going to be somewhat disappointing isn't it i mean it will it will hang over the trailer and it does look like the hitch is in kind of the right place but let's see is it gonna do it no <laughs> oh that is fantastic that is absolutely brilliant you've got to love this game Wrong hitch. We don't have the correct hitch to go on there. There is no way to hitch that on. Um, right. That means that we have to use the other. It's such a shame because that trailer would be perfect for it. It really would. That would be an absolutely perfect trailer for it. Okay, I'm going to take this trailer back down to the farm. And I'm going to get the other one back on here so that we can um, continue on. And we'll just have to... We'll probably end up having to just kind of um, jump over to the sugarcane harvester when it gets to the corners and nurse it round just to keep everything moving while we, at the same time, are running alongside the other sugarcane harvester. So let me just bring that one up there. And in our next episode, we will start harvesting that side using the sugarcane trailers, running alongside the sugarcane harvester while the one on our right-hand side continues on using the AI vehicle extension sort of we will have to sort of help it out a little bit but uh, you get the general idea so if you enjoyed this episode then please head down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome but until next time thank you very much for watching this is Frithgar goodbye and see you later